Headquarters, Department of the Gold, September 13, 1863. General, it is with regret that I am obliged to report that the effort of a landing at Sabine Pass was without success. Nathaniel P. Banks, U.S. Major General. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon on September 8, 1863, Union gunboats entered the Sabine River on the Texas-Louisiana border. The Union plan was threefold take control of the river in Sabine City, stop Texas from shipping men and supplies east, and dissuade the French in Mexico from trading with the Confederacy. The overall commander of the operation was Major General Nathaniel P. Banks, whose ineptness in the Shenandoah Valley the year before had made Stonewall Jackson a star. Banks ordered General William B. Franklin and 4,000 U.S. soldiers onto 18 troop transport ships, and U.S. Naval Captain Frederick Cocker and four of his gunboats to lead the attack. Defending Sabine City was a small earthwork fort named Fort Griffin, and the 46 men of the 1st Texas Heavy Artillery, nicknamed the Jeff Davis Guards. They were led by an eccentric 25-year-old Irishman named Richard Dowling, who was described as a man of brawn and muscle, quiet in manner if you treated him right, but woe to you if you offend him. The Sabine River itself was more narrow than U.S. Naval Captain Frederick Cocker liked, less than half a mile wide, as he led the gunboat flagship the Sagum up the river, followed closely by the USS Clifton. After spotting Fort Griffin on the Texas side of the river, the gunboats halted and began bombarding the earthwork fort for an hour. Dowling and his Confederates hid themselves in an underground room, reportedly playing cards. After receiving no response from the fort and assuming it was abandoned, Crocker ordered his gunboats forward. A sailor on board the USS Clifton described what happened next. On coming in line with a suspicious looking stake, we were opened up upon with a great fury from the battery. Dowling and his men had six cannon at Fort Griffin and for the last few months had practiced their aim on colored stakes planted in the river. These same stakes the Union gunboats now passed. The USS Clifton and Sagan were pounded with shots from the Texans. Separated by a sandbar in the Sabine Channel, both were soon disabled and ran aground. Dowling and his men fired relentlessly, hitting the Sagan and its boiler, causing the ship to explode, killing most of its crew. With the two lead gunboats so badly damaged, the rest of the Union fleet hung back, unsure how to proceed. The Clifton, now taking the brunt of the Confederate guns and stuck in the mud, had no choice but to raise the white flag. The rest of the Union fleet, mostly unarmed transport ships, retreated out of the river and returned to Union-occupied New Orleans. Dowling and his men had won an unlikely victory. The two Union gunboats were captured along with over 300 Union prisoners, among them Frederick Crocker, who spent the next 17 months as a prisoner of war. All our men behave like heroes, wrote Dowling. Not a man flinched from his post. Our motto was victory or death. Dowling was promoted to major, and the Confederate Congress ordered silver medals awarded to the Jeff Davis Guards, the only medal awarded to commemorate a victory in the Confederacy's history. Confederate President Jefferson Davis said of the men, the defense of the Sabine Pass, which for its intrepidity and extraordinary success must, I think, be admitted to have no parallel to the annals of ancient or modern warfare.